Well, I'm delighted to have a conversation with David Ross, uh, a Floridian and uh, the current coach of the Chicago Cubs, hero of the World Series Chicago Cubs, a 14 year veteran of Major League Baseball. Um, went to school at Auburn, but more importantly, University of Florida um, as a Floridian. I think that's pretty cool. And um, he's at his home in Tallahassee. And I thought we could talk a little bit about your career and your life and, and then just get a little sense of uh, um, how things are going. First and foremost, how's the how's the quarantine uh, treating you? It's been all right. You know, my life is, uh, I stay pretty busy and, and can get a little hectic here lately since I've gotten this job with a lot of uh, just learning uh, to do. So um, the quarantine has been nice. I've, I've had some calls like this, some Zoom calls, and some some meetings through Teams, but um, it's beautiful in Tallahassee right now. The weather's great and I'm uh, trying to really take advantage of the family time, uh, this unique time I get to to have the kids home and, and do some some schooling in the morning and um, really just enjoying the downtime with them. We get in the pool as much as we possibly can and uh, I don't I don't slow down too much so it's been nice to have to we have some things in common you may not be aware of um like my family you you were one of five children um your both of our fathers believed that if you arrived on time you were late um and um i played catcher for the post oak little league team that won the uh my first round of the all-star games you know that was huge really saying that's your career what did you learn growing up about your from your from your mom and your your dad and your mom your mom was an athlete as well about being a competitor and about um, sports in general uh, I you know I think we all are kind of shaped by one our community that we're surrounded by and our parents right and and uh, I've been um, really since a, a, an early age my dad got up and worked uh, and went to work at like three four in the morning uh, he was a, a kind of a butcher that um, would, would kind of take the meat and, and, and kind of prepare it for the restaurants and the school district and some of the uh, state office buildings around here. So um, just a sense of hard work early on. Um, he was, his, his day was over about the time I got out of school. So him or my mom would pick me up every day. So it was a lot of um, quality family time, a sense of hard work, uh, treating people the right way. Um, I have a faith background, thanks to them, and 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 uh, attending church uh, and being a Christian. Um, you know, just family values. I think just what it's like to to work hard, treat people the right way, um, and 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 they they set that example day in and day out for me. They both uh, had full time jobs, but uh, family was first, and they did sacrifice, uh, and were always available for me to take me to tournaments or to camps and um, and and provide me with what I needed. So. Uh, definitely a definitely a great uh, family background that I come from. You played for 14 years on seven teams, is that right? Yes, sir. Man, I mean, you must have acquired some resiliency um, being moving around. Um, it's not easy to do, uh, but that no. probably probably toughened you up a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, well, I think when you think about like a major league career, we always think about the guys like a Derek Jeter or Chipper Jones who I grew up watching and the, and the Braves were, were my team growing up. And um, you, you kind of look at, I never thought I'd be a major league baseball player, but when you look at that journey you, you, and you get there, you start to want to be those types of players, the guys that are with one organization for their entire career, but um, bouncing around and being kind of a role player, a backup catcher for most of my career only started for a short period of time. Um, and being on a lot of different teams really shaped me to see winning and losing and how different organizations uh, prepared and worked and uh, what winning organizations valued and, and what losing organizations, how they went about their business. And you can learn a lot about success and failure through uh, the journey from different uh, businesses or organizations. So um, as much as you, you kind of your mind wants you to be this um this, this, this staple of a superstar player for me, I'm so thankful that I got to play for a lot of different managers. I got to play with a lot of different teammates in a lot of different cities because it shaped me for the, for my, my journey through baseball. And now to be a manager, uh, I can pull from a lot of those different guys I played for and coaches and, and understand what I liked and what I didn't like and what, what I want to, what, what, what kind of uh, manager I want to be and what kind of skill set um, I want to use from each guy. So we're, uh, we're going to, We've asked some students to ask you some questions uh, that we will share with 
kids from all around the country. And the first one comes from Joaquin, who's a seventh grader from Texas. Who was your favorite manager and why? Well, there you go. <laughs> Coming, it's like a total I'm, setup. <laughs> that up right there. Um, Bobby Cox, I would say, was my favorite manager. Uh, I got to play for him at a time in my career. I was going through a little bit of a transition from uh, being a free agent to um, – taking a backup role behind Brian McCann and and Bobby just showed me a lot about giving the players um the freedom to be men to to kind of not a whole lot of rules I was he was going to treat you with respect uh he expected uh effort and and respect in return and you'd have really no problems and he was um treated everybody the same didn't matter if you're a guy like me who backed up or a guy like Chipper Jones uh he did a great job of, of treating everybody equally and and um, he had a positive outlook on just every situation he could find a positive to either learn from or kind of lift you up in a down situation. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I, I had a day game where I played against Roy Holiday, uh, and I was 0 for 4 with like four strikeouts, and I, I don't even know if I fouled a ball off. And I'm walking back to the dugout, really beating myself up mentally, and he passed me on the butt as I walked by. He says, you know what, Rossi, that guy's pretty good out there today. And it just changed my mindset from how bad I felt like I stunk that day to how good Roy Holiday was. So uh, I would, I pull a lot from Bobby Cox. He, he was like a dad to me in the baseball world. Awesome. The next question is from Naomi, who's a ninth grader in Arizona. And the question is, how old were you when you realized that baseball was what you wanted to do for your career? Uh, great question. Again, I mean, it, it, kids are coming up some good ones. I don't know that um, I was really ever thought baseball was going to be my career. I just kept put my head down and focusing and working hard. And um, I didn't have some big dream or goal to be a major league player. I just loved playing baseball. And um, I got a chance to go to college, as you mentioned, and play and be on some good teams and go to the College World Series twice. And then I got drafted. And I just wanted to win and, and succeed where I was at. And that just kind of pushed me uh, up to, to AAA and got the opportunity when another guy got injured. And um, you know, again, bounced back and forth, played for different teams, got sent up and down, and it created a lot of resiliency and a lot of uh, just put my head down and, and go to work when when uh, when tough times come. And you know, rather than you know, I think thank goodness for my parents, like you said earlier. You know, my, I never saw my my dad or mom pout and woe was me. It was all about well, what's next? How do we work hard and get back on track? And so I was able to do that. And um, I look up, and next thing I know, I've I've had a pretty good career and been on some good teams. Did you uh, did you t play other sports when you were in in uh, in school? I did. I my favorite sport actually was basketball. I loved uh, my high school years at basketball. I just um, loved the energy in a gym. I still go to uh, Florida State basketball games here in town. I've got season tickets in Florida State, but I love college sports. So um, Florida State's here in Tallahassee. I go to all their basketball games when I'm in town and football games when I'm here. I'm never here during baseball season, so I don't I don't get too many of those, but um, I love basketball and loved playing basketball. You know, there was a, a book I read recently called Range, which talked about how Tiger Woods started playing golf when he was th two years old or three years old. And that's all he did. And but he is the exception rather than the rule. Right. Roger Federer would be the model of, of the of the great athlete who played soccer, played also played basketball, played all sorts of sports and um, played tennis as well. But he didn't it wasn't you know, obsessing about it. And he turned out to be maybe the greatest tennis player of all time. So I asked that question because a lot of times parents kind of try to focus, force children to, to be one thing and life doesn't work that way. Right. I mean, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Well, it just, uh, the unique opportunity to play different sports and learn. And, um, you know, I think my basketball being able to dribble and body control and my, my footwork in basketball helped me as a catcher. And, and I played, I was, my parents signed me up for every season of City League. I, I, I wasn't a big soccer fan, but I played soccer and every year was on a team because my friends were on it and you just kind of went to the next level um, in basketball and baseball uh, and flag football. I, I never played tackle football a whole lot uh, as a kid. My bunch of my uncles were, were college football players and um, I just never got into it. I, I didn't understand work, having two a day practices for one game. So, <laughs> yeah. but, but you're right. I, the specialized sport, especially now, and I get it. My daughter plays volleyball and basketball and a little bit of softball. My son plays football and baseball. Um, it, it's important because it just keeps them active. And I think it's just healthy mentally as much as it is physically. 
Absolutely. You told a story once about your former Red, Scott, Red Sox uh, manager releasing you from your contract, journal manager, uh, with the team and saying that you had a reputation as a bad teammate. Um, how did you respond to hearing that, and uh, both in that moment and in the long term? Yeah, that was uh, you know, I went to the Red Sox after that, and, and um, our GM told me I had that reputation when I was playing for the Cincinnati Reds. And, um, you know, Theo Epstein, who is now my, my boss with Chicago, he, he came over and, and became the president of baseball operations for the Cubs, um, told me some real truths in that moment. And same kind of kind of decision I had to make. Was I going to kind of buck that and fight it and say, no, that's not me, and I don't know who's saying that and kind of point blame or – or could I take that information, understand that is what it is, and it's my, it's my opportunity to do something about it. And, and um, I took that information and just wanted to make sure that that was never um, something that was said about me ever again. Uh, I, reputation, reputations, as we know, are, are hard, to, hard to break, but um, I just tried to, to take that as a learning experience, and um, it definitely didn't make me happy. But um, I think as, as human beings, when we're attacked verbally about how we are, who our character is, a lot of the times we want to put up our dukes and fight back. And I really try to listen to criticism and look in the mirror first is kind of how I uh, like to, to, to do things uh, personally. So I can see my role in the situation and maybe where either communication uh, may have happened, or maybe I was just selfish at a point in my career. And I, I think it's a little bit more of that. I was at a selfish moment I thought I had a little bit of success I thought uh things were going to come easy I thought the 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 world revolved about around me for a little bit and um I got a reality check and, and thank goodness I did because um without that real honest truth uh I probably wouldn't have had the career I had and, and been able to be the type of player and be on the teams that I was a part of so I'm really thankful uh for Theo and his honesty uh in that moment and um I really look back on that that conversation is a defining moment in, in my life and in career, in my career. That's so awesome. I, you know, I, I imagine when confronted with that, uh, human beings generally reject it. They get defensive. They kind of, they, you know, they don't, they don't respond the way you did. And, um, whether it's failing at something and pausing and learning from the mistake or having someone come be a truth teller to you, uh, the way you embraced it, was pretty evident because when you were playing that last year with the Chicago Cubs, uh, it was uh, definitely clear that you uh, didn't have that bad attitude. I mean, yeah, well, it, it's it's you know easier easier now to look back, and I'm glad I made that decision. But you're right; I think um, we all say we want to hear the truth, but when we truly hear it from the people uh, that give it to us and we trust, you know, it's 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 hard to listen to sometimes, but. Um, I think that, again, that, that was a, a, a parental um, thing that was instilled in me early on of just listening and taking things in uh, and not really putting up your dukes and fighting back as we all want to be defensive, as you said, because nobody likes to hear real criticism. But people that really love you tell you the truth, and I've learned that. If you can, if you can uh, speak the truth in love, uh, that's a real powerful thing, and that's what I try to do as a manager is tell my players. I lift them up as much as I po possibly can because it's a negative game, but I try to tell them the truth in every moment uh, and try to find a way to, to do it in love. So uh, the last question from a student is from Luke, who's a fifth grader in Tallahassee. I don't know what school could be where your kids are going. I don't know. What Maybe. experiences uh, that you had being a player, will you apply to being a manager? Oh, wow. Um, probably, you know, when you're talking about being of players, a lot of adversity and things change. I think just being prepared and, and all the moments I've been through over my 14 and a half years, um, being a player, there's a lot how games change. A lot of things uh, come at you from different directions. I'm going to take that, continue to, to learn from my experiences and understand as a player how I enjoyed being talked to and how I enjoyed communication with my manager and almost um, – over communication was better than none because you make up your own story in your head. So the, as much as I can tell my players what I'm thinking and, and good or bad and tell them those truths, I'm going to do. Cause I, that's, I appreciated that uh, so much in my career. And um, there's this, there's this little uh, stigma that the front office kind of is hiding things or doing things against 
the players or, or, or doing what's best for the organization, which is true, but not, not a detriment to the players. I think the players uh, don't understand how everybody is there for their success. And I want them to know that as much as possible. I would think being a catcher is a natural progression would be a manager since you're kind of like command central anyway, um, op operating, it gives you a little leg up. Um, but the, the last question I have is, what would what's going to be give you greater joy and fulfillment and purposefulness winning a World Series as a player or as a manager? Oh, man. Um, well, you should know, uh, being a leader yourself, I think um, being a player and being a part of something like that and having those moments on the field uh, are so rewarding. Um, but being the leader of a group of men to do something historic is almost another level. And I see how much. Um, work goes into it, whether it's not just on the baseball field and with the players, it's uh, with the trainers, with the strength and conditioning guys, uh, with the, the clubhouse guys, the front office. It's a, a huge team and there's so many parts that have to be handled. And uh, being that type of leader who um, stays true to what he believes and, and, and takes the adversity and just can, can continue to uh, push forward and, and be positive and uh, lift up those players who ultimately are, are playing the game and and really a lot of it's out of my control uh, and I rely on their success and uh, I think the greater joy and the greater accomplishment and for me personally would be to be the leader of the, that group. Well good luck we're so excited that uh, there's rumblings that baseball is going to be back um, I think it'll lift the spirits of the country up and um, I'm a uh, I'm a big fan of your organization of, and, and have been a big supporter of the Cubs when I was growing up other than my beloved Astros. So we wish you, we wish you uh, great success and um, thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. I really do. And uh, I've always admired your work and appreciate all your hard work for, uh, for our country and, and our state. Uh, it, it, it means a lot. And uh, obviously your name uh, carries a, a ton of weight and, and, uh, our country and, and, and my household. So uh, thank you for having me on. I appreciate you uh, and your whole team for, for setting this up. And uh, I hope I was able to influence somebody in a positive way today.